Hey guys, I this is my second part of my double review of two movies that I got to watch over the weekend. I got to see Mockingjay Part 1 with my girlfriend Lauren, and I got to see my second best movie of the year, or, or another good movie that I watched called Nightcrawler. And I meant to go see this when it first came out too, but I just never got around to it, so... I'm just I'm kind of more probably going to be brief on this review because there's a lot that I love about this film, but uh, I feel like there's I would I feel like there's just so much that I can't really describe because it's just so how do I put it it's just so modernizing it's it feels like a modern masterpiece and I'll get to that why now I'm a big fan of Jake Gyllenhaal and I think that he's become one of the be one of the better actors of our current generation and. He really has gone a long way since he's done movies like Bubble Boy or uh, The the Day After Tomorrow and all that. And I feel like he's really grown as a mature actor. You know, he has delved into roles that he really likes to get into that character. And every time I see him in a film, he feels like he can do really good with, with a good script. And he really puts a lot of emotion, a lot of integrity, a lot of stuff that you would usually don't find like a, as far as putting into a lot of like like a lot of how do I how to explain this? A lot of charm into the role. But yeah, I really I really, really loved Nightcrawler. I thought that if I had to pick one of my top five movies of the year, I would put this in one of my top five. In fact, I put it probably up there probably in my top three. You know, it because the movie is about him, he plays like this freelance kind of like Skeeter kind of dude where he he's a fast talking smart kind of guy you know he he kind of reminds me of if uh if Christian Bale from American Psycho where instead of him being instead of him being a, a Wall Street like crazy psychopath where he still is but like instead of being like a crazy you know smart suave sophisticated guy who start out with rich he start out with on the streets you know <laughs> Where he pretty much became, he started out being a, just a petty thief, and then as the movie goes on, he decides to get him a little camera, and he goes to work for a for a uh, TV news station. And as the movie goes on, he hires this younger kid to go help him cover these stories about these car accidents and all these current events that are happening with uh, people that are dying and like car wrecks and. And this upcoming story about this uh this this break in that happened where these people were murdered, and just seeing his performance alone really makes this movie worthwhile because his character pretty much can like persuade anybody to do what he wants. You know, he just knows everybody's move, and he's just so quick to think that everybody pretty much doesn't want to reject him. You know, they try to say, "Hey, no, you you can't be doing this." He's like, "Well, how about I do this way?" You do realize that doing this kind of or or something like that, he he's just so smart what he does, you know. And plus, as he's as you see throughout the film, he's actually doing a lot of illegal shit too. Like when he's doing all the stories together, when he's when he's video camp, when he's filming everything, he's basically moving stuff around, or he's actually trying to do stuff before the cops can get there so that he can get better ratings. And it, it, it's just a really it's just always it's very suspenseful for what he's going to do next you know you never think you never expect anything to come up you know and <clears throat> i really love the score of this movie too james newton howard who did this he really did a fantastic job with the, with the score like it's very moody it feels like a a sleazy kind of it has kind of like an 80s feel kind of feel to it you know very moody very film, well, not really film artist, but like neo noirish kind of feel to it. You know, it's very laid back. You know, it's it, it's a great representation of of the the outskirts of the Los Angeles news station and how a guy like this can pretty much go anywhere he wants and film everything, and he just does what he wants. You know, it, it it's like it's like this guy can never get. Well, I'm not gonna spoil what happened, so. I'll leave it there, you know, but I really enjoy this movie, you know, and I, I feel like if this movie goes down for for Oscar season, I really hope that Gyllenhaal gets an Oscar nomination for this role because he really deserves it. You know, he really puts in a lot of great 
uh, integrity, and he lost a lot of weight too. He lost, I think, about twenty pounds. He pulled pretty much a Christian Bale from mechanic, from machinist, where he lost like a ton of weights, and he got into that character so much where he's just all like, look like a crackhead, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I really, really, really love Nightcrawler. You know, it's one of those movies that I can watch again in the theater, and I would still have a blast watching. And I can't wait to see what he does next because uh, I believe that he has a film coming up called Everest that I'm really interested in seeing. And that's going to be an IMAX, and I'll be seeing that next year. But, <clears throat> but yeah, I also do love the other actors in the movie too. Like you got Rene Russo from Lethal Weapon. She plays like the head of the news station that Jake Gyllenhaal's character of... Uh, <clears throat> That he that he pretty much tries to get a relationship with, and he also got Bill Paxson, who plays like the rival guy to him, and he's like he's the guy who tries to get him on his side. He's like, hey man, you should go with me, and we will make good ratings for this kind of stuff that I'm covering. He's like, sorry, but I prefer to work alone. I respect your offer, but I want to do what I want. I'm professional in my job, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's just it's just ways because he's a dickhead, everybody, and he he just it's just the way that Gyllenhaal is just looking at him, just like. Like I understand, but guess what? I work alone. <laughs> you know, it's it's just a fascinating movie to watch, and, it, and it's funny too in some parts. You know, you got him talking about all this stuff about how he feels with TV and how taking the camera changes, and you know, and how he pretty much when he was uh, when he was in studying, like when he grew up, he was basically that's all he ever think about was just fascinated with with dead bodies and like covering them the news stories and all that and it's just an overall wonderful movie to watch you know and i'm i'm glad we get movies like that that come out of the year because you don't get movies that that feature like an original kind of idea that's that's hard to see you know we don't always see a lot of original movies come out but yeah that's really all i got i mean there's more i want to talk about the film but i didn't really i don't want to spoil anything else for it because i know a lot of people were are interested in watching it and it's been getting a lot of rare reviews i'm glad <clears throat> well that's really all i've got for now guys there's some more movies i do want to watch that i want to talk about that i haven't seen this year but i'll get around to it eventually before the end of the year comes um I'll, the next movie i'll be watching will be exodus uh, among gods or something like that and i'll be seeing that with either my dad or my mom and we'll I'll see that probably either this weekend and the weekend after I'll be seeing The Hobbit, which I'll be finally getting to see that in IMAX 3D since last year. I didn't get to go like last year. So until then, I hope everyone has a good rest of the week and be careful out there because it's supposed to be really cold and, and I should see you guys in my next review. See ya.